Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about Cloudflare durable objects. This is a beautiful, beautiful new technology which Cloudflare has now opened in beta. So that means you can also go ahead and use it, which is pretty cool. I have actually upgraded to Cloudflare workers plan so that I can get access to Cloudflare durable objects and actually deploy an application as well. So we'll see that. But what exactly is a durable object and why does it matter? So First of all, think in the sense that serverless functions, if you have ever worked with scalability and serverless, you know that one of the biggest thing you can do to make your application scalable is to make the code stateless, right? That's, that's the first priority because you want your code to be thrown at the serverless whatever container, uh, instance, whatever it is, deploy it, run and tear it down, right? Your state should be maintained somewhere else. Think of durable objects as that place which maintains that state with the exception that you don't really have to maintain the infrastructure of the durable objects, number one. Number two is that these can be linked, these can be very closely and tightly linked to your serverless functions, which I mentioned, right? So you are, you are basically creating stateful serverless functions. That's, that's, that's the punchline, right? It kind of sounds like and kind of feels like Redis working with AWS Lambda Edge and that Redis is actually accessible by any Lambda Edge instance, right? So it's, it's kind of like that, right? So we're going to be taking a look at how that works and what happens, uh, but that's, that's, the, that's the overview. Durable objects is serverless, stateful solution for the new computing and it's and it's actually good right if you go ahead and look at this article and even at the launch the launch article as well i think i did not have that open yet but uh, when cloudflare launched it back in september or october i guess uh, with the, just telling what it looked like it was super super cool right and they actually give you a little bit of comparison between lambda pricing and durable objects pricing so there's that but the punchline is that durable objects have a unique design that's for sure when we will discuss the code and once you you know develop a bunch of things and even review the existing code which cloudflare gives you you will get a hang of it right so let's just go ahead and take a look at what i have deployed so far with durable objects and that is basically the standardized demo which edge chat demo which cloudflare gave us so it's deployed and deployed at htaddemo.codedam.workers.dev right so i can go ahead and write my name as mehul one or like just mehul right and just make a let's make a simple room as codedam for example right so this is a this is a room which i just created of which i'm the only member right so i can write any messages anything can go right here and i can go ahead and join this room from from another tab for example let's just say uh mayhul 2 and i have joined the room and i can say different messages and this will be delivered to the other person now the funny part about this is that this is completely built on durable objects with no database layer involved at all and it works on web sockets which is the most mind-blowing part about durable objects that it supports web socket support out of the box and it's stateful i mean i cannot tell you how easy this will make a lot of applications uh, to be coded and how easy it will make those applications to be coded at scale i mean at some point i would also transfer i would also like to transfer a part of code dams infrastructure because code dam uses a bunch of web sockets in your uh, when you're opened when you have open playgrounds and stuff so I would love to transfer that part to durable objects as well, but I'm still figuring out, you know, the dynamics and the feasibility, but <clears throat> that's, that's definitely on the roadmap. So what is happening is that if you go to the WebSocket section here, let's log in as Mehul, you can see that there is this one WebSocket connection established to WebSocket, whatever this is, API room and whatever it is, right? So let's just go ahead and actually take a look at how this thing right here is working so this is the code base of uh, the durable objects right the first thing which happens is 
All right, let's start from a little bit of beginning, but I'm gonna just make it a little bit convenient and not really explain every single detail to you so that it makes sense quickly. So I'm gonna highlight what the code which is important, right? So what happens is whenever you make a call to this WebSocket endpoint right here, it actually invokes this particular function, right? Handle API request, right? So what happens is this function is that we actually get down to this part right here, right? We actually get down to this part because this is HR demo worker dev API room code damn WebSocket, right? And you can actually go ahead and see that path of zero is gonna be API room for us. We enter this case, path of one will be defined for us as code dam and WebSocket because you know this part is available to us. So therefore we will not enter this if block then we will get into this particular region and this is more or less just generating a unique identifier for a durable object we'll come to that as well but what essentially is happening is that right here we are creating an instance or we are getting an instance of one of the durable objects right this is important we are trying to get here we are trying to get one of the durable objects from room and what this durable object is it's linked to some some sort of this id right here right and we get this id you know by just parsing some information um, from the url so that we can tie that particular durable object to the name of the particular room the user in is in right so what's happening we are assigning a durable object to every single room and like i said a durable object is a is a store you can think of is a is a place you can store data and it is serverless and you know it can move across the world and uh, by moving across the world i mean Cl cloudflare can intelligently transfer its access uh, to different locations i think it's still not um, available at the moment but that feature is uh, definitely on the list so yeah coming back to what this line of code here does is that it gets you that particular durable object instance right now, obviously this does not immediately get you and there are all the nuances involved, but we are not gonna get into that. And how does it know that what this env.rooms is? Well, you see that in the wrangler.toml file, you're gonna see the rooms binding is tied to this class name called chat room, right? So Cloudflare on the run, I mean, after parsing and doing all its magic, what it does is that whenever it's calling this handle API request, it'll inject this env with this dot rooms, which somehow ties to this class chat room right here. And this chat room is actually the blueprint. Oops, this chat room is actually the blueprint of the of the durable object which you have, right? So what this chat room object looks like is some basic stuff, you know, in the constructor this is the meat of the chat room object so i'm going to tell you one quick thing here that what you're doing is once you get the room object you actually fetch the durable object and what is this what, what's going on here basically your durable object that means your storage layer can only talk to code can only talk to your workers code right it cannot directly interact with the internet and there are good reasons for this but what that means is that you send a fetch request to that particular uh, durable object right now what does that mean that means that in the class chat room right here once you send that request this function will be invoked on the in, in the place where that durable object is located right somewhere so we run this function we will just ignore this handle errors this is just utility function we arrive that url.path name is in fact websockets right we we pass it like that so you can see the documentation also says that we get that it's a websocket connection if it's not then we just expected websocket so there's that uh, we get the connecting ip from cloudflare's header and then we create a websocket pair now what this is this pair is basically you can think of the one as one end of this pair being the durable object communication and the second end of the pair being the you know this client right here 
on which you're writing these messages. So one end is basically where you can write message. Another one is where the server will be writing messages, right? So two way communication. It's a, it's not really a web standard. It's, it's more of a, uh, Cloudflare specific technology. So you don't really have to worry about what's this WebSocket pair thing. It's not a web standard. Um, then we initialize the session and then we response, uh, send the response that yes, we want the WebSocket connection to be established. Now what this handle session does right here, you can see we accept the WebSocket connection, which is the socket, right? And we do a little bit of rate limiting. So we'll not you know, get into that because that's basically just a security feature. It also involves durable objects, but you can probably get an idea of durable objects without this as well. Then what we do is we initialize the session. We store the WebSocket object. Why? Because this is important for us to communicate back and forth with the person. And then block messages again is just a feature, which is like, you know, we want the user to first of all tell their name instead of just sending up message messages randomly. Um, this is again, not really important, not important, not important. Then we attach an add event listener of message to this. Now this is this, this right here is powerful stuff, right? This was never possible on serverless before. I mean, it, it was possible technically on AWS Lambda listening for WebSocket connections behind, behind API gateway, but you know, it, it, it was kind of cheating because what's happening is that somewhere down the line in the in the layer api gateway converts that message that single message which your websocket is sending into a lambda request right so you're technically still responding to http messages but this this right here is truly straightforward right i could actually just go ahead and store this number right here as 100 and it's gonna stay 100 right it's gonna stay 100 in inside this message listener so that is pretty cool stuff but you know, instead of just using your local storage on the uh, on the smart layer, smart code layer, why not just use you know what you have as durable objects? So we get into this uh, again a bunch of custom code. We can ignore this safely. We can ignore this part. We JSON parse the message dot data because uh, let's see, we are doing you know this is this is basically message dot data is just you know every single one of these which you're which you're sending to the server so there's that then we just say let's see this is also a boilerplate so you don't really need that completely then we just say construct a sanitized message data is session dot name and message is set as session dot message so they just strip away any more json information which you're sending along the way just for security reasons uh, message too long that's completely fine data timestamp this is all this is all standard javascript right and then you finally stringify the data and you broadcast it to all the connected web sockets magic magic because you are not managing infrastructure at this point which is the major bottleneck if you are doing this broadcasting with let's say a lot of web socket connections hundreds or even thousands of web sockets connected right and this broadcast method right here is a, it's also a custom message so you pretty much just uh you know just go ahead and send this message to every single one of the session which is connected and yeah you call it a day well after that is actually when you store it into your durable object so this is this is this is the final call which actually puts your data into permanent not really permanent but you know whatever you want to call it durable storage and the key is basically constructed you know from uh, when the time was uh, the the data was sent and data string is obviously the json the stringified version of the data right now how do you extract this if you take a look at this dot storage inside this class you're gonna realize that this dot storage is controller or storage that's completely fine that's again something which cloudflare gives us automatically and you can see controller.storage provides access to our durable storage. It provides a simple key value get put interface, right? So you can see that we already saw put. We saw another one called list. So you can see you are actually listing the top 100 messages um, from the durable object. Why? Because let's say if I add some messages here, right? And you can see the rate limiting is also in place. So that's pretty cool. But you see, if I add some messages here and now refresh it and join with another user, you can see I want to get those older messages, right? That's that's how it happens. 
the reason it happens is because you are listing it um, as as messages from the durable object storage right epic epic stuff i love this moving on to again this dot storage usage and yeah i mean that's that's pretty much all they do they list it they broadcast it whenever somebody sends the message and whenever somebody connects to the client they also broadcast it then uh once the user is connected as, as a websocket connection right so that is the gist of the code right and funny thing very funny thing is that you never ever i never ever touched infrastructure for a single bit um for deploying this thing so you can see it's on edge chat demo.codam.workers.dev and all i had to do was write the code or clone the code from the official repository and write wrangler publish this command right here new class chat room new class rate limiter that's it that's it that's that's as simple as it gets i mean it blows my mind to see a websocket application like this you know obviously this is not production ready technology in itself right now but it will be soon maybe like six months one year but it blows my mind to see that you can finally finally create web sockets on scale without touching infrastructure layer i mean aws is cool i understand that but but you still need to touch on infrastructure you know even you know as a maybe as a yaml file as a serverless configuration something something needs to happen but with this you're just focusing on the actual business core business logic you're setting up a configuration file and you're done for the day that's 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 absolutely mind blowing i completely love this technology i have upgraded to cloudflare uh, workers account this feature unfortunately is only available for uh people who have uh cloudflare workers so if you are not on bundled if you're not on this plan you will not be able to use it at the moment but yeah that's i mean that's that's completely fair i guess because they're still in beta they don't really want a lot of traffic so it makes sense but yeah i hope this video actually gave you a peek into how the durable objects work and look like and i hope um this puts a little bit of perspective on what's the future and how it's looking it's good it's super good if cloudflare is leading it and uh, yeah that's all for this video if you like this video and want to see more such content please make sure you are liking this video and subscribing to the channel and commenting down with what you think that all of that feeds the algorithm and helps the channel gain traction which in turn will help me to create more such quality content so that is all for this one and I'm going to see you in the next video really soon.